Hi, my name is Pam Denny. I'm an analytics architect with the IBM Maximo development team. And in today's video recording, I'm going to highlight just a small number of features available with the new exciting Maximo 7 Cognos 11 certification. Cognos 11, also known as Cognos Analytic, introduces a whole set of new exciting features. And the two that I'll demonstrate today with Maximo is the use of a data source as an XLS file, and then how your Maximo business or power users can quickly create their own dashboards without IT involvement, special skill sets, or weeks and weeks of training. So let's go right into the demonstration and first come over here to Maximo. Within Maximo today, there's a number of different ways we can export data to XLS files. We can do it through application exporting, a list tab download, I could do it from reporting, or I also can do it right here in the Start Center from a result set. But basically what the user is doing is taking a number of predefined Maximo fields from one or more objects against a query or a filter and exporting to XLS, and then they perform some sort of an analysis or action here. But what happens if we can take that same XLS file and bring it up to Cognos Analytics? So I've pre-exported my Maximo result set, but I want to quick show you another way that you can export data in Maximo, and that's through the new Maximo X Work Centers. In this case, I'm accessing the Business Analyst Work Center, and she has a concept of a data set library. And a data set library is very, very similar to a result set. A data set is simply a selected number of fields from multiple attributes or multiple objects against a query that she can then export to XLS. And again, I've done that over here. When she opens up her data set in XLS, you can see all those Maximo fields that we're familiar with. But again, what happens if we bring this into Cognos Analytics? So let me show you that now. I've come over here and I can see my new exciting, clean, modern homepage of Cognos Analytics, also known as Cognos 11, but I want to bring in one of those XLS files I exported from Maximo. Well, I simply come down here to the Browse button, and I'm going to select my Asset Work Center CSV file and select Open. What Cognos is going to do is it's going to look at all the attributes or fields in my XLS file, and I can see them over here on the far left-hand side. But what to me is so exciting about this is I also see a preview of the results. It helps me validate that this is the exact file that I want to bring in, and also that it contains all the fields I want to bring in. If I want to deselect a field, I can do that at any time. It also highlights me the measures, the fields that Cognos recognizes as a measures, which is very, very important in the analytic world, and I could either select or deselect those. But I'm simply going to click OK, and what Cognos is going to do is it's going to take my data set and bring it in to Maximo. So here is my file over here, my Asset Work Center, and now what I want to do is I actually want to create a dashboard. So let me simply create a dashboard and this, if you're familiar with Watson Analytics, is the same concept. Show me a predefined list of templates that I can build my dashboard and then share with other people. I'm going to select this one down here and select OK. And as I do this, a couple of key things that you're going to see. Here's my four quadrants that I'm going to fill up with my visualizations. But over here, if I open this up, I can see each one of the fields that's available to me. That was in my CSV file that I created. Well, let me just scale this a little bit so you can see a little bit better. And let's start to build the content. And again, imagine that I haven't had a lot of training. I'm just a business user, power user in Maximo. So I can navigate through the different features here, but I can automatically see that I probably want to come down here to this chart. And I always like to start building something simple so I understand my data set a little bit more, and I'm going to start with a summary. So what do I want to look at? Well, my data set is about assets, so how about we start with a simple count of those assets? 
And if I wanted to change any of the properties, maybe I one didn't want to go to account, but maybe I wanted a max or a minimum, I could change the value here. But let's just leave it as account. That looks fabulous. And let me bring it in here. If I click on my properties tab, I can start to see the different values that I might want to input with that. But I'm going to leave that alone for now and focus on building up my content. Again, I want to populate my other four quadrants. Um, so what's, what else can we do here? Let's bring in a lovely pie. And let's focus again on our assets. We're going to go assets by hmm, pie. How about priority? Perfect. I think let's try to put that in there. Do we like this color palette? Yeah, it looks beautiful. Do I want to show a title? Yes, so I'm going to show assets by priority. Perfect. Love that. And now that's already available for me. Let's add a few more visualizations. I'm going to add a bubble chart. We all love bubbles. They're so much fun here. So let's again go asset is my size. In this case, let's go by manufacturer. Again, I have a short-term memory, so let's put in here what my title is so I remember assets by manufacturer. Perfect. Always love when I can spell that right. Now it resizes automatically. And then let's complete this by bringing in a column. Column, column, column. Where is our column chart? Bring, drag, and drop. Again, what are we going to do here? Uh, let's see. Let's do assets by failure class. Perfect. Put that title in. Assets by failure class. And complete. Wow, look at that. Isn't that just fantastic? Within just a matter of minutes, I've created this visualization. I can clean it up a little bit. I can give myself a name. What do we want to call this? I'll call this my asset overview. And maybe I also want to add a filter on here. Let's open up that data set again. Why is it important to put a filter? Because imagine all the different people looking at your content here. I'm going to just drag one of my fields up here and put in total cost. And if I click on my total cost filter, maybe I want to look at my assets that are costing me the most money to maintain. I simply bring that over. And now I have, again, a beautiful visualization that I have for my assets. I actually made that a little bit too small. Um, my asset number, my assets by priority and failure class. It's so, so exciting, right? I just love, love how easy it is to create these visualizations. Now, when I'm done with this, I can come home and I'm gonna save that as my asset. I wanna make sure I come up here to my content and I'm gonna call it asset demo test and I'll save that. Now, when I come back home, Here's my asset demo test, and at any time, I can share that with other people, I can bet it, or I could simply open it up. And again, here's that really quick visualization that we've created in just a matter of minutes. We've added four different charts. We've added a filter. Very, very simple, very, very exciting to get started with. So in the next set of videos, we'll explore the Maximo Cognos 11 certification in more depth, but I hope you're as excited about this as I am. Thank you so much for your time.